Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games and another q and I'm Lee and in this video I'm going to go through all your questions you sent in but this time we're going to focus on how to write a tabletop skirmish game book. So a big thank you for sending those questions in. We've got lots to go through so let's get started. If you didn't know already, I've written a book called Weekend Warriors. It's the ultimate tabletop skirmish game to play with your kids. I'm also working on another book, which is called Escape from Huntsville Population Z, a zombie book, which is going to be awesome. Another tabletop skirmish game. And so that's going to be released in October. I've pushed the release up towards Halloween time now, which I think will be a real fun time to release the book and a load of merchandise that's going to come with it. Can't wait for all that. It's going to be really fun. I'm really looking forward to sharing all that with you. So in this q and I'll be doing my best to answer your questions. Now I've written other books as well as game books. So I've done a lot of self-publishing and I've also done children's books. So I've done writing, publishing and a little bit of illustration too. But I won't have all the answers, but I'm going to do my best to answer them as best as I can. It's been a little while since I put out the Q&A post on YouTube and on Patreon and, and everywhere. And so I thought it was like just a few weeks ago, but it was way back like the 5th of August, as ages ago. So I thought I'd better do this today and get the video up on the channel. After this video, I'll probably do another Q&A, but I was thinking about doing a how to start a YouTube channel video. So let me know what you think about that. And if you've got any questions specifically related to that, add them in the comment section below. Also, if you've got any other questions that we don't cover in this video about how to publish a tabletop skirmish game book, add that in the comments as well. And I'll do my best to answer it there. Here we go then, here's the first question from my mate Alrethian's Crafts and Battles, a great YouTube channel, check him out, I'll put a link in the description down below, really well worth having a look because he makes all sorts of terrain, he's just done all the new kill team into the dark, but made it from all like cardboard and things, so it's really cool, so if you wanted to build your own set, that's the place to go, so check that out, but he's asking me, how do I go about finding the right publisher? And I guess the right publisher, uh, for me, is one that would say yes. Um, but I haven't actually published with anyone in the past. I've done all my books through self-publishing. And so I think if you wanted to publish through a publisher, it's you know it can be quite difficult finding one to take you on. Um, sometimes you'd have to even have the book ready and approach them or come up with an idea and hope that they would take that idea on and then pay you up front to write it. But I think that's something that you know, you're know gonna have to get once you've been writing for a long time, you've got a track history. So yeah, I can't really answer that question too well because I haven't done it, but I can certainly answer about self-publishing and I've done that through Amazon, which is brilliant. And I've also done it through the Wargamer Vault, another great website. So that's specific to game books. So that's really helpful. But as far as self-publishing goes on Amazon, I've been doing that for over 10 years now. So yeah, I can definitely recommend giving that a go. You've got full control. I think the amount you get from each sale can be really worth it and it can work out nicely. There's also some great marketing tools there as well because that's the thing with a publisher. Even if you get taken on by a publisher, you've still got to do a lot of the marketing yourself. So you can't expect them to do all that for you. So yeah, and um, also by self-publishing, you're in complete control of your timelines, your workflow, everything. And, and I like that. I like having that control and freedom to create on my own terms. So we've got a question from Pierre Nunu who asks, how long does it take to develop such a book? And so it depends really how many hours a week you're gonna spend on it. If you're working full time and doing this part time, obviously it's gonna take longer. I tend to think a good book, if you're working solid on it, you know, you can go from start to finish in a matter of two or three months if you really push it. I like a six month uh, time scale for a book um, just so I can start working, get the draft done, put the draft away and then leave it for a couple of weeks and then come back to it, check it again and then go through it, put it away again, have a little break, come back to it. That's how I like to do things. But with the games, it's a little bit different because you're doing a lot of playing and play testing. And so you're not just writing the book, you're also coming up with a rule system. You're making sure that system works. So there's a lot more work involved in it. But I would say for me, six months is a good window to work on something like this. Uh, with Weekend Warriors, I'd been playing with these rules for a long time before I wrote the book. So I had all that experience backing it up. Um, but I would say three to six months if you can work on a book solid. I think that's a good time to, to get it done. And then add to that if you're using an editor and things like that and then play testing the game. That's going to come on top of the actual writing process. And then once you get that book back from an editor, you're going to have some more work to do as well. 
So, I mean, some people say it can take years to write a book, but it really does depend on how fast you can do it and how many hours you can dedicate to that book. But for me personally, three to six months is a great time period. Next, we got a question from Bjorn, a big support of the channel right from when I first started. He was one of the first people to comment on my channel, which is awesome, two years ago. And he's even painted some models for giveaways we've done, which were fantastic. So I really appreciate that and really appreciate your support, Bjorn. Thanks so much. Great to get a question from you. And that question is, what were the first mechanics you developed and in what order did you tackle the rest? So for Weekend Warriors, I had this idea of the armor and that was gonna really set the scene for how I wanted to develop the rest of the rules around it. And so it's light, medium or heavy armor. And so you can be fast, uh, like regular speed or slow. And all that was gonna tie into the narrative and of the game and the characters that you develop would all be based around that. So that was the first thing I knew. And then from that, I developed it by saying certain weapons would be attached to certain armor types. So if you've got a big, a big gun or a big rocket launcher or something like that, you needed to have the heavy armor to use it. And then also the different type of armor you have influences how many inches you can move. And so you have to take that into account as well. So if you've got a heavy gun and you've got heavy armor, you're not gonna be as fast. Your movement's gonna be limited and perhaps you can only shoot during your turn or your activation and you wouldn't be able to move and shoot. And we see that in a lot of games. So certainly nothing new there. But um, yeah, that's where I started. Start with the armor and I worked my way out from there. This question is from Nine Tail Hobbies and they ask, after you've written, finished the layout and had everything finalized, what is the publishing process? So I've covered that. So I self-publish and that's through Amazon and Wargamer Vault, which is a partner of Drive Through RPG, which follows up the next bit. Is it dealing with publishers, doing it yourself? Do you get sent a proof copy through Drive uh, drive through RPG. And so when I publish with those, you can do like a test. So you upload it as a PDF and then you can order a test copy and you check that, make sure it's okay, make any changes, re-upload the PDF. You can order another one if you want to and then tackle it like that. So yeah, really nice process. The um, Wargamer Vault has got some great resources on the website that take you through every step of that publishing process. So that's really helpful. And the same with Amazon, you can you get the same level there. They've got really loads of articles. There's so many YouTube videos for Amazon now, not so much for um, drive through RPG and Wargamer Vault. So I just use their website. But when I was first learning Amazon and how to publish on there, there was certainly lots of resources on YouTube that I went to, but you can read the articles and work your way through it and uh, get a book published, no problem. But I'd certainly recommend having a look at both those websites before you start, because that could affect some of the formatting and save you a lot of time. So definitely check the sizes out because with Amazon and with Wargamer Vault, I'm having to publish in two different sizes. So that's affecting my formatting. So yeah, that's something to be aware of. Let's go for a quick fire round. And this is from Henrique L who asks, when do I get up in the morning? Uh, all different times, usually about seven or eight, depending on when the dog needs to go out. Number two, uh, when do I go to bed at night? Uh, anything midnight, one, depends, all different. I don't have a set routine. How many cups of coffee do I drink a day? Maybe five. And then how many days a week do I work? I work every day, seven days a week. And so, yeah, I really enjoy what I do. And so for me, it's a lifestyle. I just work it into my lifestyle. And um, yeah, every day. And then number five, have you invented time travel or successfully cloned yourself? I've got children, so I'm hoping when they get a bit bigger, they'll be more involved. But with Escape from Huntsville, Population Z, my boy Nicholas is a co-author because he's really been helping me with the narrative, helping me test the rules. And um, yeah, that's awesome. So as he's growing up and getting older, he's 11 now. But as he gets bigger, he's certainly getting more involved in what I do. And I don't like make him, if he wants to come in and get involved, he can. And, and he does sometimes. So yeah, that's great. And I hope that can develop and then I'll have a clone. The next question is from Tr uh, Twin Stripe UK who asks, when do you consider the book finished? And uh, maybe I could give GW a few tips on this. So for me, I think you've got to like get to a point where the book is done and um, you could try and get, get it perfect. And I think if you try and get it perfect, you're just gonna be working on it and never actually getting around to publishing it. And so I think get to a point that you're happy with and that you think the customer's gonna get value from that book and then you've gotta go for it. And uh, yeah, so don't seek perfection with everything you're doing with it, but just do your best to get it done. Set yourself goals to get it done within a certain time if you want to. And um, yeah, but 
really it's yeah when is it finished because you can always come up with new ideas um as soon as it's published you think oh no i should have added that or i should have added this and there's no reason why you can't do another edition a year later and then what i i'll be doing is if i do that i will send anyone who's bought the book a free pdf version of that so it doesn't cost anything extra to get the updates to that particular book of course there's expansions that's a great way to do it and you can always do free ones as well you don't have to charge for everything if you're changing the rules and affecting it i think those rules with a book could be free so or should be free so that's that's what i think with my books and the direction i'm going with it Right, the next question is from Kurt Erickson, who asks, would love to hear about the playtesting process. How do I recruit people? How do I give them missions, unit combinations to test, so on? So with Weekend Warriors, I'd been playing it for a long time. The rule set was something me and my boy had been playing. And so we built it up slowly and we just made something that we wanted to play. And that's something I'm always passionate about when I make videos or do all sorts of content or write anything. What do I what do I want from a book? What would I want to see in a game? What would I want from a children's book in the past? And then I'll incorporate that in my own project. So I haven't had anyone doing any playtesting on Weekend Warriors. So that's a bit weird, to be fair, for a game. But I was so confident in the system. We played it so long and we really believed in the idea, or I believed in that idea that, you know, make something that you really want and make it how you would really want to play it, filling in gaps from things that are missing in games you like. Because a lot of the things, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel here. A lot of things are taking bits from different games and smushing them together into a new rule set. But elements of the game are taken from all over the place. So you'll you'll see influences from Kill Team, from Warcry, from computer games, all sorts in this. And so, yeah. So not reinventing it. And so I felt we'd, we'd nailed it. We'd got it just how we wanted it. And so we didn't do playtesting. Now, I will be doing playtesting on the new game, Escape from Huntsville Population Z, because I'm taking the Weekend Warrior core mechanics and then just expanding on it in a few different ways. And that's something I think I want some input from other people from. So I'll definitely be doing that with uh, Population Z over the next few weeks and months. And so as we build up to the launch so there we go yeah but not with weekend warriors it's it's quite a simple rule set as well you know it's not like a big complicated game it's quite straightforward and it's heavily based on narrative so for me you've got a good story you've got a solid foundation in the rules and and that was you know we were confident that the game worked and uh yeah and it has I've, i think we've had lots of positive comments and feedback and lots of great reviews so really happy about that Next, we got a question from Little Nibbler ninety three, who asks, "How in the hell does one distribute points co costs to different units?" So again, with Weekend Warriors, this was all done um, differently because it's a skirmish game. You're only going to pick four to ten individual miniatures or models, and so you're not playing like a point system like you would say with Warhammer forty k with like. Um, power levels and things like that so i didn't really have to worry about it with that game but i am looking at and have been working on rules for a larger scale game very similar to how that's done in the, like with points and so basing it on like you've got 100 points and this is what you build your army with so i think i'll cover that as a separate video because there's quite a lot going into that that's a lot of like doing spreadsheets and things and so best to show it rather than try and explain it here um, and, and I need to work on it a bit more before I can properly explain it. So, yeah, I think that'll be something I'll certainly know and cover again in the future in more detail. Next, we've got a question from Mad Toy who asks, why is formats other than 1v1 left out in most skirmish games? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, because I like all the, like, the solo play is really fun. I like co-op, and that's what I'm basing uh, Escape from Huntsville Population Z on. That's going to be a big solo co-op game. You can also play one player versus one player, no problem. You can also play 4v4 if you wanted. You could go crazy and have loads going on. Um, but yeah, I like all the different ways to play. I think that re that's really fun. Having like swarms coming at you in waves, and you're having to see how many levels you can stay or how many rounds you can stay in the game for. I think that's fun. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why really. Maybe I think it's more complicated. You have to almost add more to it. So if you just want to come up with a simple system and then maybe bring out expansions later on and leave yourself room for that, then maybe that's why. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I'm not really sure. I think there's some games that do it. But yeah, not not most of them. 
uh, don't, that's for sure. And now we've got quite a big question in a short question, which is from Dr. Pez Popper, who says, tips for fellow writers. So, wow, this this is um, pretty in-depth. You could go on for quite a while here. But first of all, make it fun. That's really important. I covered that in my previous Q&A. It's got to be fun, I think. You've got to enjoy what you're doing, especially when you're writing skirmish games. Why write about something you don't like? And I take that approach of my videos. I try and keep everything positive and make videos about things I enjoy rather than focusing on negative things and making videos about things I don't like. And so that's the approach I take with most things. Write a book about a subject you're interested in. If it's not a game and you're writing another book, then think of something that you're interested in, you've got experience in maybe, or something you want to learn about and, and work into a book. But specifically for games, I think uh, start with a genre you really like or a rule set you really like and build from there. So for me, it's all about the narrative. I love coming up with narratives. Weekend Warriors, I wanted to do something so I'd have a core rule set that I could have and then build on. And I'm using that now to start branching into other games like Population Z, where I can really focus on the narrative, build worlds and tell stories. Um, but for me, Picking zombies after Weekend Warriors was mainly because I love the zombie genre. It's something I don't cover much on the channel, but zombie movies, I think, are brilliant. Um, Walking Dead is awesome. And just funny zombies, I think, are brilliant. And I've always wanted to have a line of merch with zombies incorporated into it. So that's something I want to do as well. And so, yeah, make it fun. Write about things you enjoy and are passionate about. And I think that's going to come across in your writing then. You could do things like set and routine, start writing the same time of the day and things like that. That certainly works. Um, another big thing for me, though, which I touched on earlier, is once you've written a draft or you've got to the point where you've, you've written the bulk of the book, put it away and then come back to it in a couple of weeks or even longer than that. And I got that from a book uh, by Stephen King called On Writing, and it's great advice. I can highly recommend getting that book if you're into writing any type of book or any type of writing, um, to be fair. It's a great book, and so that's some really good advice. But that book is packed with his like stories and his advice on writers. But that's the big one for me. I like to come back to something later, look at it with a fresh pair of eyes, and then you see things you probably wouldn't have before, and you'll have new ideas. So yeah, that's a really big tip that I can certainly recommend doing. Have fun, and then yeah, have little breaks in between where you put it away and come back to it later. Next, we've got some questions from Biddy Boy, and let's have a look. I've got to go in a bit close to read this one. It seems to me that there are more sci-fi based skirmish games currently on the market than fantasy. Would I agree with that? And if so, why do I think that is? So on War Game of Old, there's actually a lot of games that are based around the kind of wars like Napoleonic and um, the Great uh, World Wars and things like that. So yeah, there's there's a lot of that kind of historical gaming going on that I don't hear much about, certainly on YouTube channels, because the big games dominate them so much. And um, and then there's so much like new models and marketing for them. So it's understandable why. Um, sci-fi games, I like sci-fi games a lot. I love Warcry and things and used to play D&D, &D, got a big passion about that and the fantasy side. But there's something about having a futuristic army of like space marines or whatever and building that army and taking them into battle. That's pretty fun. So I don't know, even with Kill Team, I'm getting back into that now with the proper rules. You've been using Weekend Warrior rules for the past year, mostly since Octarius came out. And it's really fun to play the sci-fi games. So, yeah, I'm not sure because D&D &D is so big. That's huge. And that's fantasy. So maybe that's why maybe the kind of fantasy side of thing is taken up mostly by like um, Dungeons and Dragons. So people who are into that maybe migrate to that game a bit more. And then while there's people who actually want a war game, want to shoot guns. Maybe that's why, too. Want to shoot some lasers, bow and arrows. Don't always cut it. You want some lasers and some tanks. So there's certainly a big appeal with it there, I think. So, yeah, that, that's my that's my thoughts on that anyway. And we've got another question from Billy Boy who asks, how important is balance in a skirmish game? Now, this is something that I'm quite passionate about. I think having a game that's not necessarily balanced is a good thing. And Weekend Warriors can be balanced if you pick very similar warriors but if you go for the ones you can pick them out like the sniper is so high powered because I love snipers so I built that into the game um, you could pick the sniper out and you know you could even have four if you wanted um, and then you'd be really high powered but that that takes away from the fun of it why would you try and 
take a game like Weekend Warriors, deconstruct it to have all the best ones. I mean, you're playing with your kids, and so you don't want to destroy them with the most OP war band you can build. So chill out a bit and just focus on the narrative. And that's what I like to do is focus on the narrative of the games. And sometimes having an unbalanced game is fun, especially when you're the underdog and then you win against all the odds. The dice are in your favor. You make some good moves. Your opponent makes some bad moves and then you end up winning the game. And so for me, life isn't balanced. And so perhaps war gaming shouldn't be either. And having that unbalanced can like bring about some nice twists and make it really fun and challenging. And then, you know, with Warhammer 40,000 is an example I keep going back to in lots of areas because it's so well known and we all, you know, a lot of us play it here. Uh, you know, they're always trying to get some balance with it, but there's always going to be something that's more powerful than another. And then it's your skill level as well. You could have a balanced game, but then two people who have got a completely different skill skill level, which is going to unbalance it anyway. And so there's lots to consider. Um, but for me, I don't look for balance. I look for fun narrative. I look for interesting characters. I look for uh, fun ways to play those characters in the different stories. It's like I play Space Wolves in 40k sometimes and they never do well, but they're fun to play. It's fun to just charge in with your wolves um, and and then also drop down with models like Ayak Rockfist who never makes a charge roll. He throws his foe hammer, misses pretty much every time, but that then becomes a meme and it's quite funny. So yeah, um, balance doesn't bother me too much. So yeah, that's, that's what I think about balance in the game. And I haven't built it into Weekend Warriors on, on purpose in a way because you want it to be quite random and have lots of options and then it's fun for people to figure it out themselves and have a look and you know if you want it balanced you could simply take the same four warriors on each warband and population z is going to be very similar in that respect the scenarios are going to really affect the balance of the game because you're going to be going up against something like um, zombies, maybe other survivors, but you never know how many zombies are going to come in. That's going to be down to chance. So there's always going to be that level of unbalance in the game on purpose to make it unpredictable. Sometimes it's going to be really hard. Sometimes it's going to be easier and um, sometimes in between. And I like that. I like that unpredictability. And, and as I said before, life isn't balanced always. So I try not to do that in the games too. Next question is from Alex Hogan, who asks, will the skirmish game be interactive on both players' turns? Now, Weekend Warriors is uh, you one player activates a, a warrior, then the next one, then the next one. It's back and forth till all the warriors have been activated, just like Warcry, just like Kill Team. So very similar there. Uh, the difference here, though, is you are rolling save rolls, so you are interacting in that way too. And then with Escape from Huntsville, Population Z, same thing, going to have the different activations alternating and then you're making saves as well but you're also going to have a zombie phase where they're moving around so there's going to be lots of different phases and then lots of interaction with the different attacks from npcs the other player and the zombie so yeah lots going on there next we got a question from sprue whisperer who asks do you start with a theme or an idea first or is there a mechanic you build a game around then throw a genre theme on top at the end so with weekend warriors I was really passionate about having one rule set that you can play any genre, use any models, and then you don't have to keep learning rule sets if you want to play another game. And that was built just because me and my boy were playing games. He didn't like learning the rules for all these different things. He got bored really quick. He's young. And so, yeah, he wanted something that we could just play. So we'd play our own games with like Lego and things like that. And then I thought we could really develop this into something. And, and then I came up with a core rule set that didn't have a narrative attached to it. But that was then something I could take and write sci-fi games. I could put um, fantasy stories to it. I could do pirates. Literally anything you could imagine, you could play that genre with Weekend Warriors. And so I've taken that core mechanics now, which was like as simple and as streamlined as I could make it. And then I've taken it over and started a game in a genre that I love, which is the zombie genre with Population Z. And so I've got that mechanics now and I'll just build on that, add in some more complexity to it. And then with the theme and the storyline, I can put that on top of it. And so now I've got that Weekend Warrior rule, so I can always go back to and start doing like other games. So next I'll want to do something around sci-fi, so I'll go and do that. I also want to do an RPG style game, which is more fantasy. So I'll be taking the rules from that and tweaking it a bit. Because this is where the rules came from with us, was when we were playing 
like Dungeons and Dragons, but homebrew in it. So we've got a lot of those rules and a lot of things that we can bring to a fantasy RPG style game, which focuses a lot on the combat though. So that's something I want to work on too. So yeah, have that rule set. Bit of both really. Originally it was the rule set and the mechanics, but now it's coming up with the genre, pairing them together and coming up with new rules on top of that rule set that suit the genre and the game I've got in mind. Right, we've got lots of questions from Sprue Risper, so let's go through the next one, which is, do you start drafting your rules and book text via publishing software, Google, Word documents, post-it notes, that kind of thing? So when I first start, it's literally just writing it by hand on a grid. I like the blue grid paper, the graph paper, and so I write everything out on that. I make notes, loads of different notes. We try different things on the tabletop, change the notes, come back, pool it all together, and then I start typing it up on the... Um, just a word processor on pages. I like to use Mac and so I do it on pages, write it all up and then I transfer it across when I start formatting the book and I use Keynote. I like to use Keynote and then export as a PDF. So I'm not really into Adobe too much. I really love using Keynote. So yeah, I use Keynote for all the publishing and I think that works really great for me. I don't know if that's really good advice though because I think it can be quite um, time costly uh, it can take, you know, it can, it, you, if you make a mistake early on, it's going to affect you later and you have to make a lot of changes. And so it's getting it right early on. But because I've been using it for so long with all different things I've done, um, like videos with publishing and stuff, I'm really used to it now. But I think if you were starting off, I probably wouldn't recommend using Keynote. It's just something I've stuck with and um, yeah, just haven't changed it or don't really want to learn how to use InDesign, to be fair. So that's that's where I'm at right now. And I think I've just answered this question there. So yeah, with the book layouts, yeah, I just, I use Keynote. So I've covered that one. And I've mentioned that I'm an author, ghostwriter and illustrator. How hard is it for someone not familiar with publishing, let alone self-publishing, to actually learn to put together a layout for a rule book? And do I have resources I can recommend online like YouTube? So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, go to Wargamer Vault, go to Amazon KDP and look at all the articles they've published. It gives you everything you need to know on the dimensions to use, how to set it up to do all your margins and things like that. So all the information's there. Also look on YouTube. There's some brilliant resources on YouTube, as we know, for everything. And so for publishing, it's no different. And if you want to learn something like InDesign, I'm sure you'll find something really useful there. I can also recommend a channel called Runehammer. I love that channel. That When I was playing RPGs, I used to watch it all the time. And he takes you through drawing and writing books. And it's really cool to see his creative mind at work. And he shares a lot of that with you. And um, so, yeah, I definitely recommend checking out Runehammer, a brilliant channel. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just read read the, the articles from the website and then go on to YouTube to find out the particular software you want to use to make sure you get everything right. And then there's going to be people on there who are doing videos with the software for KDP for sure. We're still going with Sprue Risperer and here we go. How much do you test mechanics before you add them to the rules and how do you go about play testing any new rules? So this is uh, with we are Weekend Warriors. We had that core set. But now as I go over to Population Z and I'm adding more rules to it to incorporate things like zombies, more NPCs, things like that. Now I'm having to test more rules. And so we just play, we play and we play and we play and we test and test and test and we try out scenarios and see how it works until we tweak it, until we're happy with it and we find that it works really well. So that's me and my boy just going for it, rolling dice and just practicing and seeing what happens. Yeah, so we come up with the idea, work out some different ones play it on the table in little scenarios. So we don't play a full game. We'll just play little scenarios with those particular rules and then just keep going, going and um, until it clicks. And then when it clicks, put it in. You'll find if you do another rule later on, sometimes they can conflict and you have to change it. Maybe you just scrap them and start again. And so, yeah, that's how we do it. And the next question, who do you give your feedback rules, book set in the X, uh, randos, local game club, which have an editorial group. So yeah, none of that with Weekend Warriors. Um, very much a case of what what do we like and, you know, hope there's an audience that like it too. So yeah, I think I covered that earlier on. Next question. Do you have a product editor who reviews the product before you go to publish? No, I don't. I just do it all myself and I go through that process. So yeah, I do all the editing. I use um, things like the paid Grammarly. So you've got all that grammar checks going on, uh, which is really good. And you've got that software, which does a fantastic job. So why not use it? 
And then, um, yeah, just so passionate about knowing what I like and believing there's an audience out there who would like the same thing. So, yeah, I put a lot of faith in that. And now tabletop miniatures rule sets are not the most lucrative of markets. How do I go about advertising? So um, I don't advertise a lot. I do the odd video on my channel. I've covered how to play. And then I've got the YouTube channel, which is its marketing tool in itself. You know, I'm out there every day making videos and then in the description I've got the links to the book and that's one way you can support the channel by buying the book so I include that in there but I don't mention it all the time because I make daily videos I don't want to just be selling my product and pushing it and so I've gone quite passive about it really let people find it and then having it on Amazon isn't a guarantee people are going to discover it there. The reviews help and it pushes it up the ranking. You can also do some marketing with Wargamer Vault, which is really good. Every time you sell or each month you get points and then you can use the points to do free things on their website, like have a banner ad, push it to um, like a discount offer, offer of the day, deal of the day, that kind of thing. So Wargamer Vault is very good and very supportive with the authors. Again, it's not going to guarantee you're going to get a lot of sales. Um, but I think a YouTube channel is the best place. Build up an audience and then uh, you could market to them. I could do a, a book a book video every now and then, which I do. I'll certainly be doing a lot more when uh, Population Z comes out because I'll be doing a big build up to that over the Halloween period. So that's really fun and exciting. Weekend Warriors, I had some personal setbacks which affected the launch time and what happened after that. And so that didn't go exactly to plan. Um, but I'm not relying on a launch to get all my sales. So for me, it's a long time project. I'm going to be doing this a long time. The, the YouTube channel and working in the tabletop skirmish game genre. And so for me, really, it's a case of putting products out there, making content every day, reaching out on social media. That's something I'm building up now. And I'm, I'm starting to go on other platforms. So you might see me popping up on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, even TikTok now, LinkedIn, all over the place. So you might see me there. And that really helps. But really, it's just to like add content that adds value, put that out there on the social media platforms, direct back to the YouTube channel, and then hopefully people will discover the book that way. So for me, it's quite passive and it's quite a long time patient project. And we've got more. Let's have a look. Do you enjoy writing rule sets or are you the kind of beholden to the Games Workshop grind of being perpetually forced to release something new and shiny just to stay relevant or keep pace? So I like writing the rule set, but I like the idea of having one rule set that I can just build on and tweak. So rather than coming up with new rule sets all the time, I like that, that concept. I also like writing the stories though and the narrative and creating the worlds and things like that. So that's what I'm really passionate about. So that's why I wanted to have that one rule set to rule them all. And then I could build on that with stories. So that's the direction I like to go in. Um, I did enjoy writing the mechanics and I love adding little new rules to things, especially for like one off one shot games. You can add a little rule to that. That's really fun. But as far as creating brand new rule sets, I just don't think I have to. I think the Weekend Warrior one is really nice, really fun. And then anyone familiar with that, when they buy a new game from me, they won't have a whole new learning curve. They're just going to take the core and then add to it the specifics that go in the new game. But it's not to say I wouldn't come up with something completely different in the future, because often you'll get inspired or get an idea and you want to expand it. But um, for now, I'm happy with just this one core rule set that I expand and build on for each different genre. And we've got one more from Sprue Whisperer. He says, almost forgot, when working on mechanics, do you use tokens and scrap pieces of paper randomly on the desk or do you actually crack out the miniatures to figure it out? Yes, I use miniatures. So um, I write down a lot and on the paper and just scribble out scenarios and things um, like distances when I'm working things like that out, I would do that on the paper. Then I'd get the miniatures and just have a go rolling dice all over the place. And yeah, figuring it out with actual miniatures is the best way for me. I really enjoy that. But there's more to the question. Uh, what rule sets influence and or inspire the most? So I started the channel with Warcry. I love that. But before it was um, like RPG, home brewing, Dungeons and Dragons games. So it's taking elements from that. I like bits of Warcry, like the critical hit. I love that. The six, when you get a six, it's automatic damage. Um, well, it's all automatic damage with Warcry, no saves. But I've incorporated that into Weekend Warriors where a six will deal auto damage. You can't make a save against it. So I like that side of things. I also like having a different number of activations per warrior. So that's something you'll see in Kill Team, very similar. And yeah, so it's just taking bits from all different games, a big influence from Dungeons and Dragons style. 
And um, yeah, so certainly those are my main ones, but also reading other books. Like I love Burroughs and Badgers, such a good rule set. You won't see any of that in my book because it's based on the uh, polyhedral dice, the D&D &D style dice. But they've done a really interesting rule set with that. And I definitely recommend checking it out. Of course, you've got so many books. I mean, uh, Last Days by Ash from Guerrilla Miniature Gaming. That's a great book. Interesting rules. Um, even down to, let's have a look on the shelf. I've got Last Days, Burrows and Badgers. I've got Core Space. Then there's Blood Bowl. Brutality's a big influence. Uh, just so many. Um, oh, what's the car one? I can't remember the name. That's on there somewhere. Yeah, so loads of books, but just read as many rules as you can get hold of. Get ideas and uh, also computer games. Computer games and like apps, they can be really useful because they've got some interesting mechanics and rules in them. When you combine all that together, you can come up with something really interesting. But there's a bit more to this question. Do I follow any independent game developers to see what direction they move in mechanics? I don't really. No, not I don't. I, I do like to read other rule sets and skim them and see what's going on, but I don't follow anything like that. And I think that's the end. So that's all the questions. A big thank you to everyone who sent a question in. I hope I've answered it well. I've got I've done it my best. Um, some things I'm not too sure on, like with the publishing side. I've only done self-publishing, so I can only really speak to that. But uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope uh, it's been helpful in some way. And if you've got any questions that weren't covered here, add them down in the comments below and I'll see if I can answer them there. That would be great. And I might do another Q&A video later on. I'm also thinking about doing a how to start a YouTube channel Q&A. So you might be interested in that one. And so add your questions in the comments of this video and I can include them in that video too. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, please hit that like button. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And don't forget to hit the notification bell too to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below.